What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create better gaming thumbnails. Now, if we go to my YouTube channel here, we scroll to the bottom of all my videos, you can see the progression of my thumbnails. So this video here was from four years ago, but the gaming channel actually started about seven months ago. So you can see the progression of my thumbnails as I go along here, as I'm learning new things, we go all the way to the top. And what I've come to like is just a plain background, like plain colored background, basically with the, the sunburst that you can kind of see in the back. And for the text, I like to have the yellow and orange gradient with a bit of a drop shadow. And then some of the images, I like to add a glow or a kind of a border to just to make it pop even more. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. I'm going to go step by step uh, in creating better gaming thumbnails. So stick around. If this video helps you out at all, please consider subscribing to the channel, like, uh, drop a like on the video, and you can catch me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jimmy Knives. All right, guys, let's get started on the tutorial. All right, so today I'm working in a program called GIMP. It's absolutely free to download. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And I'm going to recreate this thumbnail. So this is the thumbnail for this actual video. So I'm going to recreate this start to finish. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to File, New, and you're going to want to make sure the size is set to 1920 by 1080 and hit OK. So this will create a new file here. All right, so the next thing you want to do is we're going to make the background blue. So it, as soon as you create a new file, it, it creates a, a new layer here. So it creates the background layer. You can see it there. And we're going to make it blue. So if you go up to the bucket fill tool and select your color. So we're just going to keep it on blue and fill it up. Next, we're going to add the border. So we're going to add this black border. For that, you're going to want to add a new layer. And make sure it's all the same here and make sure it's a transparent layer. Hit OK. It'll create a new layer in the layer panel here. I always like to, even though the it might make its own layer, I always like working in a new layer if I'm doing something new. I don't want to work on the background in case it adds something to it and then it'll just mess up the background. So I always like to work in a new layer. So to make the border, you're going to want to go to filters, render, oh sorry, filters, yeah, render, geometric figure, so gfig. And it'll pop up this panel here. And so you can see the, all the different figures up here that so we're going to want a square. And the color we're going to want is black. And then you can make this any size because we'll resize it in a moment. We'll just make it that big. Um, the stroke, uh, I can't change anything. It's going to round the edges on mine. I don't know. I don't have any of the other shapes loaded. Uh, no fill because we're just going to make a, a border. Show grid, that's just the grid and the snap to grid, snap to grid. Show image is a show image and hit close. All right, so we're going to resize this to make it look better. So for to resize it, we're going to make sure that layer is selected. Go to this the scale tool. So if you right click on this, it'll be, bring up all the different options here. But we want the scale option. And in order to scale, just click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. Make it a little bit bigger there. Click and drag. And we'll drag this out a little bit more. Well, that looks pretty good. So for this, this is the scale option up here. So you're gonna want this to be broken so it doesn't uh, move both the left or the top and the, the sides at the same time. So you're gonna want to break that chain and then just hit scale when you're done scaling. There we go. We have our border. All right, next I'm going to drag and drop the images that I'm going to be using in this thumbnail into the program. I'm going to find the images on my computer and just drag them and drop. So the one image I'm going to add is a sunburst. The next other one is Vault Boy. So these are the only two images that I'm going to be using. And if you want to go to Google and you want to find thumbnail effects, just Google image thumbnail effects and you'll find all these different effects that you can add. It's super easy. All right, so let's hide the sunburst for now 
and let's edit Vault Boy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bit of a, a shadow or a shade around him. So what you're gonna wanna do to do that is right click and make sure it's added to alpha channel. It should automatically be done, but if it's not, add to alpha channel, then alpha to selection. Next, you're gonna wanna add a new layer. So this layer will be above. And next, select, grow. Grow up by, let's grow up by 10. You can see that now the layer is grown. And go to bucket fill tool. And I'm gonna make it white. White and blue really pop. So I'm gonna make it white. And fill. So this is on top. So this layer is on top of Vault Boy. So we're gonna move him below. Move it below. So now you can see that the white is now outlined. Looks really sharp. Next, to deselect this layer, or to select none. And then what we can do is we can add a bit of a Gaussian, it's called Gaussian Blur, to the white. So make sure that that white layer is selected. Go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. You can see right away it adds a bit of a blur to it. What you're going to want to do is drag the X and Y axis to make it as blurry or non-blurry as you'd like. Now you can see it there. And hit OK. Now what I also like to do to these um, layers sometimes is add a bit of a drop shadow to it. So you can see in this layer I've added a bit of black to it. That's just the drop shadow effect. But what I'm going to do Make sure this layer is selected again. Go to Filters, Shadow, Drop Shadow. You see how it darkens it a bit? I'm just gonna, you can play around with the opacity on that. But I'm gonna add, mm, let's do, I think that looks pretty good. I'll click OK. And then if you're satisfied with how this all looks, you can make it one layer to really clean up the layer panel here. So what you can do is just select the top layer, right click, and merge down. Now it's just one layer instead of two. I'm going to move Vault Boy. I don't know where I want him. Actually, I want the border at the top, so I'm going to move the border to the top. Now we're going to rescale Vault Boy. Make sure you're selected on him, and just rescale. Oh, no, we don't want that. But we want to make sure the links are connected this time because we want everything to move together. So we'll just do that. We'll actually move them down a bit more. Move them down and make them even bigger. All right, so now that we should be satisfied with Vault Boy, let's move on to the text. All right, so now we're gonna add some text to our thumbnail. Click on the text tool. It should automatically create a new layer here. I'll just show you in a second here. So when you click on the image here and then you start typing, better gaming thumbnails. See here on the right, it created a new layer for us. A good rule of thumb though is to create a new layer and then start typing just in case. But in this, in this example, it actually created a new layer for us. So the text that I use is actually the Fortnite text. So it's called Burbank. Uh, then there's different um, versions of it. So semi-bold, bold, that sort of thing. I like the semi-bold the best. And I did make a video on that if you're interested in downloading that font. All right, so next we wanna rescale the text. So I like to select it rather than rather than using the actual scale, I like to actually scale the font itself. So we're just gonna highlight it and grow it. And then from there, we're gonna move it. We'll actually move Vault Boy over. Let's move him over a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now that we're selected back on the text layer, you, we're going to add an outline to this as well, similar to what we did to Vault Boy. Right click, Alpha 2 Selection, 
new layer. Make sure you're selected on the layer. Select, grow. We're gonna grow this one by five. Hit okay. Bucket tool, change your color. I'm gonna change this one to black. And then we're gonna make it black. Now again, just drag this layer under and select none. And we can see that we made a black border. But also see that this is two different layers. The black looks way better. All right, so now that we're gonna be selected back on the text layer here, right click, alpha to selection. Now we're gonna add the gradient to it. So in the bucket tool, you gotta to right click and gradient. All the tools can also be found up here as well. The gradients there. And the color that I really like is the yellow and orange. So that's all the way at the bottom or you can obviously pick your own colors. The one I really like is yellow and orange. So click on yellow and orange. And all you do is because the gradient's already selected is hold, click and hold the mouse button, the left mouse button, and just drag up or down. I'm gonna make it yellow to orange. And I'm just gonna move all these. You can see how these little points here change the color. I don't really like the orange, but I like the, I like the yellow, the brightness better. So I'm gonna move it down. Actually, that's probably good. All right, so I'm happy with what that looks like. In order to make the gradient stick, just hit enter and it'll get rid of the gradient uh, option. Next, you're going to want to select none to get rid of that gradient or get rid of that border. And also what I like to do with my, my text is add a drop layer as well. So with, actually, if we're satisfied with these, we can merge them. So that's what we're gonna do. Again, select the top layer, right click, merge down. All right, next I'm gonna add the drop shadow. So again, that's make sure that layer is selected. Go to filters and it's on light and shadow, drop shadow. And with this, you can see that it added the drop shadow if I preview it. And I always like to change the opacity to darker. That just makes it pop. And there you have it. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna add our sunburst. So we're gonna unhide that layer. We are going to rescale it. And I'm gonna move it just so it's behind him. The yellow does kind of look cool as it is because everything's yellow and blue, but it kind of ruins the, the lettering a bit. So we're gonna scale that and we're gonna change the sunburst to white. So we're gonna go to colors, exposure, and just overexpose it so it changes it to white. And then we're gonna fix the opacity so it's a lot, it's, so it's not as bright. So we're gonna move the opacity down and you can see it fading out slowly. So if you move it down, it mo removes it at all. And then we're just gonna make it a little bit brighter. So I kinda like that. So there you have it. That's how to create better gaming thumbnails. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go into, you know, I'll select the, the, the guy here. I'll go to colors, I'll go to saturation. Oh no, I'll go to colors, I'll go to hue saturation, and I'll just make him a bit brighter. So you can see how it changes there. But that's just little things. In order to make better gaming thumbnails, I think this is a great start. And this is what I do. So I add the colorful background with the sunburst, with these letters, letters here, with the colors, and with a character or whatever I may be uh, wanting to showcase on my video. So I hope this video helps you out, guys. Please leave a like if it does. Subscribe to the channel for more. And you can also catch me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jimmy Knives. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.